This is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile, and this is my haul video for the week ending November 30th. Uh, it's the end of the day on Saturday, and uh, this was Thanksgiving week, and ended up doing quite a bit of sourcing, although I thought I wasn't really gonna have anything much to uh, talk about this week. What I was unaware of is that uh, Goodwill participated in Black Friday, and the Goodwill that I went to actually had 50% off their entire store. So I uh, got a little bit more than I'd anticipated. And this was also the weekend for the Kane County Flea Market, which is the monthly flea market closest to me. I've actually not gone to it for the last several months. Just life gets in the way and haven't been able to get to it. And uh, so I really wanted to go. It was a lot smaller this month because it was rainy, it was cold. So there were really no outdoor vendors. Uh, you were able to park in the... Uh, fairgrounds itself so it was just the indoor uh, booths but I actually found some stuff there as well so I'm going to cover a little bit of everything that I had found so starting out this was uh, actually prior to Thanksgiving I had made a stop at a, a Goodwill a uh, little bit farther away from home and found uh, this plate this is a royal ducal uh, Ducal, Ducal, I apologize, I don't know actually how to pronounce it, I don't think I've ever come across one of these before. And it was actually one of a pair, and I really don't know why I continue purchasing plates, probably because uh, being a child of the 70s and 80s, I had all kinds of Norman Rockwell, the plates, the collector's plates, that was supposed to pay for my college, didn't happen by the way. Uh, but it was something that I was surrounded with growing up. So I am, I'm always attracted to uh, different types of uh, decorative plates. This one was one of two that was available. I probably should have picked them both up. But this one, I, was, I picked this one up specifically because it was talking about Christmas Eve. It is a scene from the Pickwick Papers, which if my life depended on, I could not tell you what it was about, although I just know it's Dickens. But I picked this one specifically because it's Christmas Eve at Mr. Wardle's. Trust me, I had to Google to figure out who Mr. Wardle was and know that he is from the Pickwick Papers. The other one off the top of my head, I can't remember. I wanna say maybe it was also the Pickwick Papers and it may actually have said the Pickwick Papers on it but it didn't have anything to do with Christmas. It was, it was. I wanna say, a, is he a banker? I don't know, it looked like more of a business scene. It didn't look particularly decorative. Uh, the, the artwork was very similar to this, but I like the fact that this actually has a Christmas scene uh, within it. So it would actually, I'm hoping, will attract more people to want to put this out uh, seasonally. It is stamped, um, you can see there, and you can also see it was $1.99. Pink was full price. So I did go ahead and pay $2 for this. I thought that was a safe uh, safe bet. I did a little bit of digging uh, once I got home on Worth Point, and these do sell for roughly $20 to $30. So did a, ni a nice purchase. You can kind of see on the back, uh, if you see the close-up, you can probably see some of the crazing. So there is some age uh, to this. Uh, when I did the research, I did not actually tell, couldn't tell when these were actually produced, uh, but there's obviously some age to that. So for $2, I think I can turn around and sell that for probably around 20 bucks plus shipping, uh, maybe 15 to 20 bucks plus shipping, depending on if there's any others marked. Uh, I'm kind of going out of order. I, it was basically how things stacked nicely on the table. So this was part of a different Goodwill haul. And... I'm not 100% sure why I bought that. No, I take that back. I lied. I am become more active on Instagram. I used to have a personal Instagram account, did a little bit for theater, uh, posted some things, but it just really didn't maintain it. When I started Trusty Huckster Mercantile, I created the business account and started following all the different things that I was interested in. And one of the uh, one of the Instagram pages I follow, there's a couple that are related, but they are specifically for the Hornsey Hornsey, Hornsey uh, pottery of England. And this is the first time I have ever seen Hornsey pottery in any of the, sh in the, any of the places I've gone. It is a set of four uh, salad plates, luncheon plates. Uh, the bread and butter are a little bit smaller. Uh, these are eight and three quarter inches. So I think from doing the, the research, I think this is the luncheon plate. 
Uh, it's the Bronte pattern. And they're not particularly valuable. Uh, I paid, uh, it was $1.99 at Goodwill, but green was half price. So I paid a dollar each. So I paid $4 for the set. From what I can tell, realistically, they're probably gonna sell about $5 each uh, online, uh, plus shipping. So it's it was one of those cases, it was definitely a knee-jerk reaction because I love the look of Hornsey Pottery. I definitely I always, when uh, Fern and Bramble is one of the Instagram accounts that I follow, there's a couple others that really specialize in Hornsey and I always, um, and I apologize if I'm slaughtering that name, but um, I always am check, uh, liking photographs that they post because it's, it's just very simple. It's dated, uh, this actually happens to be, it's, it is specifically stamped Hornsey 1977, made in England, and then it has Bronte speci specifying the pattern. But it's a very simple pattern, brown on brown, uh, so it'd be pretty flexible to what people would be looking for. Some of them did have a little bit of crazing, but for something from the 70s, you know, you'd probably expect that. Uh, the next item that I picked up, I will admit I wasn't 100% sure what this was, but I knew, but I knew what it was. This is an M.A. Hadley plate, and I have actually successfully sold a set of these before. What I had sold were the side plates, which were kind of crescent-shaped, and so sold them for pretty decent money. If I remember correctly, they were around 30 or 40 bucks is what I sold the three for. This is a salad plate, bread and butter plate. It is uh, seven and a half inches in diameter. Okay, what is that? Now, I called it a snail, and when I did the looking on, on Worth Point, there were other people that called it a snail. Not too many. What appears to be the primary uh, tag for it is it's a whale. Okay, I kind of see that because with the little wavy lines at the bottom, I guess that is water, and it is a little bit more fish-shaped. But then I don't know why he has two spouts coming out. So I'm not 100% sure. If you take a really quick look at it, it looks like a factory, you know, so who knows, but I'm it's probably a whale based on the, the number of tags for whale compared to snail. It's a whale. And this is something that I paid $2 for. It is, it is uh, written M.A. Hadley. Interestingly, when I did the research on it, I was not aware, and I'm not 100% sure of this, it just happened to come up in a couple posts, and again, if it's on the internet, it must be true. This was called, they referenced Louisville Pottery, which is what that large punch bowl I had for the 12 days of Christmas, which I still haven't posted because I haven't been able to take a picture of it because it's so big, but it is the same type of uh, glaze. So I, I wasn't aware that M.A. Hadley was related to Louisville Pottery. It's a standalone plate, um, but from what I was seeing, the ones that were listed as snail were selling for slightly more, maybe because people thought they were more rare. Uh, so they were selling for around $18 per plate. Uh, once you got into the whale category, because there were more of them, they were selling between 10 and 20. So again, I paid two bucks, not gonna be a huge money maker, but there does appear to be a following for that. And I had sold the other ones fairly quickly after I listed them. So I'm hoping I can uh, get that up there. Uh, this is, I am again, very partial to any type of decorative plate and I just, there's different scenes and different things that I like more than others. What I was attracted to on this one, I do like the design, not something I'm super excited or ecstatic by, but it's, it's a very, it's a very pretty hand painted, you know, daisy motif with the green borders. It's a Haviland France uh, stamped plate. But the reason I went ahead and picked it up, well, twofold. One, it was only, only a dollar, so I figured I really wasn't too much at risk. But I was also intrigued because of what it was, the person that signed it did not sign their name. They actually signed St. Wahlberg Academy, C-O-V-K-Y. K-Y is Kentucky, C-O-V, because I went to school in South, Southwestern Ohio. I knew that C-O-V was Covington. So I did a little bit of research and turned out that the St. Wahlberg Academy closed in 1931. Not a shocker, you'd think something like this probably would be dating prior to 1931, but it was actually interesting to do a little bit of research on this. It was replaced by the Villa Madonna College, which from what I can tell actually I think still exists. Uh, there was a convent, there was a monastery, this college, and then this academy. 
So there's gonna be a couple different groups that might be interested in this plate. So when I do my keyword searches, I might be able to pick up more people than just hand-painted Haviland France plate. Uh, I paid a dollar for it. I didn't really have any comparables for it, but I, I can probably get 10 to 15 bucks out of it, uh, plus shipping, uh, because there is going to be some general interest because of maybe that academy. Uh, this one I was attracted to on site, and then I flipped it over and I was more attracted to it because it's a piece of Wedgwood. Now I do not know much about Wedgwood, and this one is listed as the Gainsborough pattern, and it says it is Wedgwood and Company Limited by Enoch Wedgwood. So when I was doing a little bit of digging, the Enoch seemed to have some significance to it. I don't know in particular why, uh, so I'll, I'll be doing some more research on that before I post. It is a standalone plate, um, uh, you know, so that's not always, it's, it is a dinner plate, so it is something that it would be used for dining. So I don't know if people will pick this up as a replacement or it would look as a very, uh, look like a nice cabinet plate. It's a very red, a red kind of a chintz, maybe a little bit larger floral pattern. Uh, it is stamped. It was marked $4, but green was half price, so I paid two. You can see the stamp on there. Um, I was finding some of these. The last one that sold was in 2018 and it sold for 20 bucks. So for two bucks, not a bad investment. So I'll probably list it somewhere in the 15 to $20 range uh, plus shipping. I am i don't mean to keep harping on it uh, and emphasizing my age because I tend to want to forget my age, but I am a child of the 70s, so avocado green speaks to me. I don't know if it speaks to anyone else, but I liked the look of this plate. It's the hearthside, uh, hearthside china. Uh, it's the fleur-de-lis pattern, which that seems a bit of a stretch to me that to call that a fleur-de-lis, but whatever, it was the 70s. Uh, it is stamped uh, Japan, hand-painted oven-proof stoneware, Florida de Lee, Japan. It was originally stamped $2. I paid a dollar. I dug and dug and dug and dug and dug trying to find more to this pattern because it is a dinner plate, so I would have expected there would have been more in the collection. So either somebody else had already bought them and had missed one, but it is in perfect condition, so they must have just missed it, or for whatever reason, these people only had one. So maybe they use it as a display piece. Uh, I really like the looks of it. Um, $2, half price, I paid a dollar. There's not a lot of activity in this. Some people said the 70s are gonna be the next mid-century modern, I don't know. Uh, right now, the, the best comps are running around 10 bucks for a dinner plate. Not bad, paid a paid dollar for it. We'll see what happens. I am a sucker for, well, a lot of things, but I'm also, I'm a sucker for tins. When I started sourcing for Trusty Huckster Mercantile, one of the things I almost stockpiled on was Daher tins. And I did quite a bit of research on them. I was trying to figure out if there was a catalog available or anything that talked about all the different patterns. Uh, I might've talked about it in a previous video. I do a lot of set dressing for community theater and the Daher tins typically, they look like porcelain. And so in a set for a community theater production, it's great because you can put it on a table, you can put it in a bookcase, you can make it look something decorative, but if somebody knocks it over, it doesn't shatter on stage. So it's, it's how I kind of added some to my collection to begin with and then started uh, collecting to resell. They're not particularly valuable. Uh, most Daher tins only sell between five and 10 bucks, but if I can source them cheap enough, it's still something, there's not too many listed online right now. I need to get some more of them up, but it's really one of those individual things I like, but I like tins. This is not a Daher tin, so I don't know why I went down that path. Actually, I do, and I'll tell you in about two minutes. But this tin actually came from the people that I had sourced a lot of my other Daher tins. And this is a West German candy tin. Uh, it is stamped on the bottom, container made in Western Germany, Klan quality, K-L-A-N-N -N quality. It is the, a photo of, or an image of a coachman, uh, a coach with horses, and then each of the sides is decorated with uh, another European style uh, scene. It is a hinged box in really good condition. And I paid, it was marked $4, I got it for $3. And these sell, when I did a little bit of digging, in so far in 2019, there have already been seven of these that have sold and they pretty much sell for $15 uh, every time. 
There are a, uh, probably a half a dozen to a dozen of them also listed on Etsy. So that's a bit of a problem because there's a lot of them for sale. So maybe if I can stockpile some of my other tins, I can maybe corner the market on selling tins. But regardless, I like the looks of it for $3 to turn it around for a $15 sale. It's worth it. Uh, and I just, again, I like the looks of it and it's something that uh, hopefully it looks like they can sell fairly regularly. I went on a little diatribe on Daher because I also got a Daher tin. Now, what I found interesting about this one is initially I didn't think it was, I had no assumption it was a Daher tin. I just liked the looks of it because I have a uh, vintage Santa collection. And when I flipped it over, I discovered it was designed by Daher. Now Daher changed its name, I wanna say in 1982, if I remember correctly, and became the tin container company. Um, so anything that actually says Daher by definition is vintage. And this is in absolutely beautiful condition. I mean, this looks like it came straight out of a Walmart. And um, so I'm really happy that I was able to pick this up. I got this, it said three, I got it for $2. Um, there were some of these selling online. Again, they're not particularly valuable. I wanna say the ones that I was seeing selling were selling between five and 10 bucks plus shipping. So it's, it's something I think if I can get it listed soon enough, I might be able to find uh, some takers on it because it's got a really nice image of Santa on the top and then a image of Santa in his sleigh with the reindeer uh, going around the sides. So again, a really nice looking tin. There's no rust there. Well, there's a little bit of discoloration on the inside, but for the most part, it's in great, great condition. Um, so I was really happy to be able to pick that up for a couple bucks. Obviously Christmas is coming. I'm probably getting a little bit late in trying to get things posted, but this was another purchase I had made at one of the Goodwills earlier in the week. It was a new uh, old stock set of coasters. They are, it says White Christmas coaster set. Now I don't really understand the specifics for White Christmas. I, it does have the registered trademark after White Christmas, but I don't think this has anything to do with the movie. So I think it's just, you know, people want a white Christmas, although interestingly, all the trees are green. There's no snow on the trees. So not really sure why it's called White Christmas, regardless. They are a set of seven metal uh, coasters. Uh, they were marked $2. I got them half price for a dollar. They were made in China, but they are dated on the back, copyrighted 1988, Art Mark Chicago. So they are vintage. Um, they're in pretty good condition. From what I can tell, because there are staples that originally put the card, uh, put the bag into the card, there are no additional holes. So it does appear that this is new old stock that somebody just hasn't kept the packaging and stapled it back together. This appears original. For a buck, I think I could probably p sell these for maybe eight, eight to 10 plus shipping. And they're, they weigh nothing. So the shipping will be really inexpensive. That I think is just a cute little vintage uh, coaster set, seven coasters that match uh, for people that might be entertaining uh, at Christmas time. I do admit I am attracted to this little false graph pattern. I keep finding pieces to it. This one, I don't really know what it is. Uh, it's clearly part of the false graph winter frost pattern, which I've had success selling pieces of it already. This was a really nice uh, small piece. It's marked a dollar. When I found it online, I could only find one reference that it had sold, and they referred to it as a pie, individual pie server slash baker. I don't know why this would be considered a pie server. Maybe a baker, but I don't know what you're baking because it's only about an inch deep. It kind of made me think it's a coaster, but it's a really big coaster. Could it be a wine coaster? That's a possibility because that I didn't check, but that probably would hold a wine bottle. It could be a baker because the bottom is the the bisque, the un, the unglazed um, stoneware that sometimes casserole dishes and things are made out of. So maybe it is a baker, but I don't know what you're supposed to bake in something so small. So I paid a dollar for it. Um, I did find them selling, not for huge amounts of money, but I could probably get around 10 bucks for it uh, based on um, what the other ones are selling for. Uh, another piece that I picked up at the same, same place, this was actually a little a vintage store, thrift store that is in uh, downtown DeKalb. That's not typically, it has very odd hours, so I have a very hard time going there. 
Um, but I was passing through town for a business meeting and swung by and that was where I got the false graph uh, winter frost and then I also got a piece of Hager. Now this piece of Hager is a little bit more contemporary. It has a foil sticker on it that calls it garden house but then it clearly says Hager at the bottom. Uh, so far I've been unsuccessful in figuring out what date this is. I'm gonna guess this might even get into the 2000s but based on the colors I'm thinking it could be 80s. Uh, so I just need to look because most of the Hager I've seen actually have the impressed or embossed uh, Hager written across. This is the first one that I've picked up with the foil sticker on it. So I know it's Hager and it's in excellent condition and I only paid a dollar for it. So I'm sure I can turn it into something. Hager is not particularly valuable. Um, I'm pro and it's, it's gonna cost some, it's not heavy, but it's gonna have a decent amount to ship, cost to ship. Because I'm in the western suburbs of Chicago, which is where Haber, Hager was uh, near where their factory was, Hager is fairly common. So I need to get a little bit more familiar with it and recognize which ones are valuable, which ones are not valuable. Uh, my prized possessions right now have been um, the potato diggers, which were Royal Hager. And I picked those up in the gunmetal finish and was able to sell those. Uh, got a really good deal on those and was able to sell them uh, for a nice, a nice price point. Um, this will not sell for as much as the potato diggers, but I like it and I might actually create a category within my Etsy store specifically for Hager because it is something I come across quite a bit and it might be something that people might find interesting um, to go into. Uh, the vase is something that for some of you, you might be able to help me out on this. I liked the form of it. It's a, it's a nice size vase. It's a pink color with the gold uh, accents and then the little white flowers. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of stylized. You know, they, they kind of look like dogwood flowers, but that's not a dogwood tree. So it's like, I, it's just, it's a very interesting look. Probably 50s or 60s. I paid $2 for it. So I figured I wasn't gonna really risk anything because it's in perfect condition and it's kind of got this neat uh, very detailed uh, trim going around it. There's a couple of issues where there's some scuffs to it. I took some barkeeper's friend and tried and did some light cleaning on it, see if I can get those off, but I was afraid of rubbing off the pink. So, so far I haven't had a success. I may just leave them, show them in the photos so people know and let somebody try and clean them themselves. But I don't know what it is because I saw this mark and I did Google Lens. I went into Worth Point. I have the upgraded Worth Point subscription to uh, go into the um, the marks. I I said, I thought maybe it was a beehive. I thought I was super smart because I thought, oh, it's a beehive, I'm gonna find that. No, there was no, there were no other beehive marks that looked like this. So I assume it is Japanese. Again, just because of the way some of the gold is done on these. Um, but what do I know? So, and then the flowers themselves are not they are just they're almost like a moriage. They are painted onto them and they're not individual petals like a, a three-dimensional type thing. And the gold is somewhat moriaged as well. You can kind of see on the end, it's kind of rubbing off or not rubbing off, like wrapping around and you can see it's kind of a little bul bulbous where they started it. So you can feel the texture of where the slip glaze created that gold. It's a really pretty piece. Uh, you know, I, don't, I think people still get flowers. So there's, you know, so there's some relevance. For only two bucks, couldn't find any comps on it because I don't know what it is. And I looked for that 78, and I'm pretty sure it's an I because there's a line at the top and the bottom. So I 78 I5 or IS, couldn't find it. So I have no idea what it is. Probably sell it, you know, 15 bucks. I think, I, I think it's worth 10 to 15 bucks plus shipping. Uh, I can probably get somebody to pick that up. I don't remember if I've, I've mentioned in, previous, in the previous video, I have a personal interest in red wing pottery, specifically the Bob White pattern. I think I'd gotten a piece, so I showed that in one of the earlier hauls. This is another piece of red wing pottery that I picked up because I had, I'm not particularly knowledgeable on red wing, so I had not seen this pattern before. It's not particularly rare, I just hadn't seen it. It's called the Iris. It was a standalone plate. It has the red wing stamp on the back. It was $1.50, but I had it, got it for half price, so I paid 75 cents. And so you can see the red wing and then the numbers at the bottom. 
they're not valuable. Uh, when I did some looking for it, the examples that I found, this is the bread and butter plate, so it's a smaller one, about five bucks. Yeah, so it's not gonna make a lot of money, but I kind of like the looks of it. And you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be on the lookout, see how it goes, and I'll be on the lookout for other pieces just because I kind of like like the concept of Red Wing pottery. You know, it's, it's a Midwest pottery, um, Minnesota, not Illinois, but, um, and I, because I like the Bob White pattern, you know, I might be in places I can find it. Uh, this was something I per picked up from the flea market today. It is marked Corona Ironstone Ware made in Japan. Uh, this dish uh, appears to typically come in two different patterns. This one with the blue, I guess they're supposed to be grapes. Uh, maybe they're blueberries, I'm not really sure. Um, it is stamped on the back. The other one I think is, um, I wanna say is red or purple, the other one that I saw. Um, they're again, not particularly valuable. I'm seeing them sell online between 10 and 15 bucks uh, plus shipping. I paid $2 for it and you can see the stamp. And I just like the looks of it. It's a nice small size. I, I'm, I believe it is a dinnerware piece, so it's like a small platter, but it could also very easily be used as a dresser tray or you know just sort of a cabinet plate, anything. It's a really nice, uh, a really nice size. Um, some other pieces that I picked up, this was also from the Goodwill earlier in the week. I just, I really like serving pieces and I can't say I've been particularly successful selling a lot of them, but it's harder to ship them. So the price can kind of go up. So if I ever get one of my, uh, if I ever get in one of my shops, the places that I'm on the waiting list for, I'm hoping I'll have more success selling them. But this was a pear uh, platter and a vegetable, open vegetable bowl that I paid a dollar each for. They're both Noritake uh, with the M in the laurel wreaths, hand painted, made in Japan. So they've got some age to it according to Worth Point that uh, pattern or that stamp was used between 1906 and 1916. They're in really good condition. I noticed when I was looking at a couple of them, the roses, a little bit of the pink is coming off in a couple of the roses, but it's again, it's a really simple pattern. So if you have a green or a light blue or a pink, you would be able to use this as an accent, you know, for serving pieces. And, uh, you know, we've missed now the Thanksgiving, um, rush to uh, entertain and get pieces for entertaining but Christmas is still coming so hopefully I can get those posted and have some success there. The uh, next piece that I found I may actually go back because admittedly there were three of these and I didn't have a chance to do the search when I was in the store in the Goodwill so I only picked up I figure I'll pick up a pair uh, based on what I found I think I now want to go back and get get the third one because these are Syracuse China um, they are marked Syracuse China. I paid a dollar each for them. And they are called the Atomic, uh, no, Atomic Jubilee, Atomic Star. I thought I wrote it down, but evidently I didn't. So I, I'll try to, I believe it's the Atomic, it's Atomic something. I want to say it's the Atomic Jubilee. Uh, it's, it is Syracuse. The prices that I found on these were very attractive. Um, these are evidently considered the dinner plates. So they're oval, but they are considered the dinner plates. There's also square dinner plates. They're also not particularly common. A pair of them sold for 60 bucks uh, earlier, uh, earlier in the year or last year. Um, that seemed to be the exception. They were easily selling for 10 to $15 per plate uh, on their own. So for a dollar each, and I left one sitting at the store, I might go back and have a set of three. Uh, I think I'll be able to sell these fairly easily. It's a very cool mid-century pattern. I know Atomic was in the name, um, and uh, definitely it was an easy, an easy decision to pick that up, and then even better once I realized uh, what it was worth. Continuing in the China category, this is another piece that I really was attracted to. I uh, saw it sticking out of the bottom of a stack of uh, glass um, serving bowls and trays. This is a piece of Franciscan china. This is called the Olympic pattern. I paid $2 for it. It was $4, but green was half price, so I paid two. So I've got the Franciscan um, stamp on the back. It says Olympic right on there. 
It is the larger size. This is the 13 inch, uh, 13 and a half inch, so the chop plate or charger. And they're, these are not common from what I can tell. There are none available on eBay. There are none available on Etsy currently for sale. And according to WorthPoint, the last one that sold was in 2013 and it sold for 65 bucks. So I don't know if the prices stayed up, stayed went went back down. I have two dollars invested in this, so I'd be happy even if I already get thirty. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at some of the other pieces that are available for sale, but right now there are only two pieces on Etsy in this pattern even even available for sale. I don't know if that's because it's not a, not a popular pattern, but it is Franciscan. So I would think that this could be a case that people that want it once it gets posted they get it. And I've had success with a couple other specialty uh, patterns and um, people end up setting up uh, saved searches that when somebody posts something, they get notification that a new item has been posted. So I might get some luck. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research to see the best plate, uh, best price, but this is in perfect condition. It looks like it came straight out of the factory. And when I first saw it, I thought it might be a piece of Lennox. It just has that look to it. It's got the yellowy glaze. It's got the trim to it. It's got the, the higher gloss. Um, so I was a little surprised when I saw the Franciscan um, stamp on the back. So really excited about that one. And I think that was definitely gonna be a good investment. And then because I'm a glutton for punishment, I am still picking up art, but I'm trying to learn my lesson and not buy big art because I'm still trying to ship the big piece of art that I sold a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is an item that, once again, from my childhood, because we were into the whole collector's plate and all that world, Edna Hibble was a name that I recognized and, and is an art style that I recognize on site. We never cared, we never bought her stuff. It wasn't something that we particularly found interesting, but she was very prevalent in the 70s and 80s. And it's obviously stuck with me because the minute I saw this thing almost fall out at me in Goodwill, I knew exactly what it was. But I didn't know particularly whether there was value to it. So it's in a really nice frame. It's clearly a professionally done frame. And then it has this tag on the back that talks about what it is. So it's Michelle and children, and then it gives the date. So it's uh, from 1983, so right from the era when I was remembering it. And it's this little tag, which I thought was something that somebody, the owner might have found and, and put in there. But when I found the comps, it appears this is on every piece that was sold. And this used to be a sticker from the framing company that created it. And I believe these were sold through the museum because this is actually states the Hibble Museum of Art in Palm Beach, Florida. So that information is on there. So the ones that are out there are all identically framed. Um, and I paid $3 for it. And the last one, they just we uh, there was just a sale for one of these in July of 2019 that sold for $70. And then the one before that that sold was in 2016 for $99. Not sure why, but hey, somebody's willing to pay it. So I think I can very easily get a, a very nice attractive price on this. I don't know if I would go, I certainly wouldn't go up to the 99, but I might hover somewhere around that 70 mark. I'll have to see if there's any others listed right now and see what those are going for. But I did like it because size-wise, this is feasible to ship. The box, I could even do, a, I probably would fit this in a flat right box if I had to. So I'm. It, this does not scare me trying to ship it. The next piece probably could be a mistake, but it was a $1.50 mistake, so I'm not overly concerned. This is literally how it was on the shelf. The plastic was, falling off of it, it, it was ridiculous. So we was gonna toss that aside, but it was $3, uh, but half price, so it was $1.50. And so what this is, is a framed or a matted something. And again, I need to learn about art and I kind of feel very uneducated in some of this stuff. So if anyone wants to educate me, I am more than willing. But it, came, it comes with a really nice um, mat. So this is included in part of it. It also comes with a cardboard back, 
which according to Dr. Lori, basically says that means this was done in modern times because it's cardboard and cardboard is bad, but that's what comes on the back. So this was all stacked together in, in the wrap. And then what this is, I don't know. So you can tell something has been glued onto this board. Now this board is clearly showing signs of foxing. So there's some age to this and it has not been maintained in the best conditions to create all this dis discoloration. What's nice is the mat maybe was done more contemporary to hide all of that foxing. I have no idea. But this piece, it, it's intriguing because you can see on the back, and I don't know if you'll be able to, well, you can kind of tell, you can see where the image is kind of changed or indented within the board but it's not a engraving it's not an etching this is clearly you can feel the ridge where this picture is somehow dry mounted or somehow attached to this board the board then has all of this text on here which seems to indicate significant age so there are things like 1879 which is right at the bottom of the, of the photo or of the image it is in German, and at the bottom you can even things like the, the way the printing is done, you can tell that this is something that probably, I would guess, is um, 19th century, is something from the 1800s. So it says 1879, you can always replicate that print, but I don't think in 1879 they'd be able to do this little tiny, this really thin image. So I don't, again, I don't know what this is. It was $1.50, so I'm not overly concerned. Even if it's nothing, it's something that I could ship fairly easily and you know put two pieces of cardboard and have a big piece of flat mail go out. It's something that if with the mat can be framed in a standard size frame and will look very nice. I just need to do a little bit more research. I did went on to Worth Point and tried to do all of these searches for C Beckman P-I-N-X period. So P-I-N-X is evidently an abbreviation, but I couldn't figure out what it would be an abbreviation for. So that's on there. Depose and then hyphen registered. Couldn't figure that out. Denote, D-E is the first word, then N-O-T-H is the second word. And under that, Kain Husung. I don't know if that's a name. I have no idea what that is. And then Friedrich, well, F-R-I-E-D-R period, so abbreviation for Friedrich Bruckmann's Verlag in Munich and London. But this appears to have the language of the Munich branch. So again, I like German things because my daughter's in Germany, but uh, I don't know what it is. So again, not a huge investment. I have a feeling I, we're going to have an entire closet full of art that all is going to say, well, it's not a huge investment. But I do hope to be able to sell it. So I will try and put it up there. I probably will just put a, you know, maybe I'll ask 25 bucks because I think it's, I think it's worth 25 bucks. I think it looks nice. And I think frame, if, you know, you'd have to do your own framing, but once you frame it, I think it would just, it would be a very attractive piece. Um, maybe it's worth more than that. If anyone wants to share that with me or just wait for me to post it and get it at a steal. But I will try and do a little bit more research, get my daughter involved to see if she can figure out what, if, if these are abbreviations for anything because this, the, the one that intrigues me is the C. Buckman P-I-N-X, because I don't know if this would be, if, that's, if, if this is a photograph, if the P-I-N-X is some sort of a printer. Um, yeah, so we just, have to, we just have to do a little research. And actually, you know what? I just realized I've got my loop sitting right in front of me and I hadn't looked yet. I'm going to look to see, and I do not see a lot of little dots. So I do not think this is a print. This is not a modern dot matrix type print. So that makes me feel good because I just did that kind of like pseudo publicly because I didn't know what I was going to see. So, you know, again, step in the right direction. I think this is something kind of cool. We shall see. So that is it for my haul for the week. Again, week ending November 30th. I will probably be doing another at least one, if not two more videos this weekend because... Uh, depending on when you see this, uh, starting December 1st, starting tomorrow, I am going to be running a fundraiser on my Etsy shop 
for the Just One More Dachshund Rescue Organization, J-O-M-D-R dot org. Uh, is run by an individual I used to work with and uh, I no longer work, work with her, but she is um, running this. She started a 501c3 specifically to work with uh, Docs, uh, Docs and Rescues and she's specializing in senior rescues, which I think is fantastic. And so what will start happening uh, December 1st through the month of December, everything on my site, if you purchase uh, anything that is dog related, so it could be a figurine of a dog, it could be a, uh, a plate with a dog, it could be a picture that has a dog in it, but not of a dog. If you can find a dog anywhere in the piece that you're buying, I will donate 10% of the proceeds, or 10% of that sale to the JOMDR um, uh, Docs and Rescue Group. So why one of the things I was sourcing this week, although you just saw a lot of other things that I sourced, uh, one of the things I was sourcing was specifically dog items that I could stockpile into the shop to attract people that might be specifically looking for you know dog lovers. So I actually found some dachshund items, which you know ironic. I was about to do a dachshund rescue fundraiser, and I didn't have any dachshund stuff. So I have uh, some of those going in, and I also had said I was going to do a what sold on Etsy for the month of November. And I'm not 100% sure the best way to do it because I ended up selling way more in November than I had anticipated, which yay me, but it could end up being a really long video. So just this week, I've already shipped out 10 shipments and I got another order today, which I now still need to ship out. So it's, it's, it, I'm not sure the best way to do it. How I'm gonna, I, want, I don't want it to be super long, but most, if not all of the items that have sold are items that I hadn't done a whole haul video yet because I, there were things I'd already posted on my shop. So we'll see how I do it. I'll try and get that one in. And I still don't think I w I'm gonna be able to sell enough to do a weekly version. And I'm not sure if they're gonna be particularly interesting uh, particularly once I get caught up and do all the haul videos, but you know, let me let me know what you think. If you like the, you know, I know a lot of people do the what's sold on their shop. Uh, if you like those types of videos, let me know. If those are not something you're interested in, again, I will only do them if I feel I can share something of interest. Uh, and right now I'm trying to do the research and I'm trying to get the notes out when I do the haul so that I can say, you know, this is why it's important or this is what it might be valued at or this is the history. Uh, we'll see what happens with the with the sale video. So you might see me again once, if not twice, again this weekend. But I'm going to try and get this one posted. And uh, appreciate you um, sticking through to the end. If you're still here, I really appreciate you give me a thumbs up on the video, a like if you could comment on it, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and um, you know share it with your friends. Let them know that uh, I've got a there's a new vintage reseller out there and uh, hopefully you like what I'm doing. And if you want me to do more or less of anything uh, after the couple of videos I've posted, give me those comments as well. I'm always looking to improve. So thank you very much. Again, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Find me on Etsy, Instagram, and Facebook. And now, of course, on YouTube. Uh, thank you very much. I will talk to you again soon. Goodbye.